What you are about to hear is real. Do it nine to five five. Uh, we can see it now. Thanks. We've uh, got the suspect house under observation. Uh, it's that light house over there, the one with the yellow trim. Why don't you uh, get to the shadow of that big tree over there? We'll advise you as soon as the suspect gets for his car. Over the yellow trim. Uh, five five unit nine ten four. Which one would that be? One back there. We just went by it. Okay. We'll move in behind the other detective unit. Lights are out. Dark street. Moving under the cover of a tree. This is Don Reed, police recorder. You're in a special undercover car designated as Unit 55. Driving, Sergeant Ron Perkins. It's a beat-up 1944. Dance in the fender. Paint's peeling off. A two-way radio bill under the seat. A hopped-up motor. It'll take any hot rod. We're dressed in sports shirts and Levi's and working with two special agents. You're on a narcotics investigation. Our job tonight is to pick up a narcotics pusher who's been selling to juveniles. So while you're with us, remember, these people are not actors. This is it. This is real. This is Night Watch. Night Watch, the actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors. There is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch, presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. And now we switch you to a special undercover car operating somewhere in the field on a narcotics investigation and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. Unit 9 to 5-5, five, five. can you read it? 5-5 five, five to Unit 9 ten, four. Unit 9 is another undercover car parked on the street. Two agents and a policewoman give a very casual appearance. Their car is on a different frequency than ours, so our only contact is that portable transmitter. You're sitting in our undercover car, 5-5, five, five, and we're on special assignment. Now, if things go according to plan, in a few minutes, a suspect who has been pushing marijuana to high school kids... Well, come out to his car and make another delivery. Now, our job is to follow him without being observed until he contacts a user and makes a sale. That's when we'll move in. Our uh, information is that he'll attempt to contact a young girl. And if we have luck, we can grab them with the stuff. Now, this particular suspect is real cagey. If we're spotted, we're dead. Well, time will tell. One of the agents is sauntering up toward our car. Let's get the window down and see what's up. What? Somebody's in the house using the phone. I don't know what was that. Marijuana. How much? They're bringing in two boxes of thing. You're bringing in this fellow's house here? Yeah. How far from here was it that you found the uh, marijuana in that box? Seven box. Seven blocks. <clears throat> Big vicious circle. Narcotic. Sure. Sat on that junk 24 hours, we'd have been in business. We don't have enough guys. Well, someday you'll have enough guys, maybe. <laughs> I think we ought to move up with this car. I think we can move up. Or you can duck down if somebody comes. We'll sit back here. And keep in contact with us with unit nine. Yeah. So all we do is sit tight. Oh, on foot. Five, five, repeat. Suspect leaving the house. Suspects are leaving the house. Ten, four, which direction? Going east. Ten, four, are you going to follow him? Ten four unit nine. Uh, Mike, if I flick my taillights once, I'll take them. If I flick them twice, you take them. Oh, 
Oh, here's the deal. As, uh, as soon as we get around this short block, we should pick up the suspect's car. He should have some marijuana in the car now and probably will attempt to sail if he makes contact. Coming up to the corner. There's the suspect's car casually driving by. Back down the street about 300 yards. The other undercover car following. We'll uh, cut in between and do the tailing first. Uh, unit 9 to 5-5, five five. is that you ahead? Uh, hit your stoplight so we can spot you. Thanks, we see you. Uh, stay with them as long as you can, then we'll take them. 5-5, five five, roger. Following at about four car lengths. Tight on the right-hand side. Offline to his rear-view mirror. Now there goes his turn indicator. He's going left. We'll go on... We'll go on straight ahead. 5-5 uh, five, five to Unit 9. Suspect's making a left turn. You take him. Unit 9, Roger. Just glancing back, uh, the number two undercover car picking up the tail. We'll have to uh, shoot around the block now in a hurry and get in behind. Uh, Roger, Unit 9. Uh, we see you just crossing the intersection. Heading behind you. Unit 9, Roger. There we are. Both cars uh, just passed in front of us. Suspect is still driving carefully. Now we're uh, swinging in behind the undercover car. Suspect is... Hold on. Suspect is... Up ahead, a couple of blocks, almost out of our view. Unit 9 to 5-5, five five. suspect cutting off on the side street. Take him, go to. 5-5 five five to 9, roger. Our, uh, all the units gone on past, they'll uh, swing around the block. We've got to get him into view before we lose him. There goes his lights way up ahead. He's uh, turning... Yeah, he's going to turn right on Santa Monica. Turn right on Santa Monica. Unit 9 to 5-5. Five five. Uh, we're on Santa Monica, but haven't spotted him. Check that. We see him now. 5-5 uh, five five to 9, Roger. Right here at the main street. Now we had to lay back. Both cars are out of our sight now. Trying to pick up speed. Now here's a, a big open stretch here now. Well, they're not up there. They must have turned off somewhere. Well, we're in trouble now. Good five five to control one. Can you pick up unit nine? Five five. Unit nine wants you to pick them up. Northbound on motor. They're traveling without light. Roger, 9. Coming in loud and clear. Unit 9 to 5-5. Five five. Suspect is pulling into the drive-in on Rose and Santa Monica. We're staked out. Across the street, you might uh, park in the rear of that gas station on the northwest corner. We can nail him whichever way he goes. 5-5. Five five, roger. Now a couple of blocks down the street. This may be where the suspect will make his contact and attempt to make a sale. Gas station on the right. There go our lights. Coasting in. Yeah. There's his car running. Yeah, I see. Suspect's car is parked in the driveway. It's full view. I can't see the other unit. They uh, must be up the street a ways. Now we've cut our motor so that the smoke from the exhaust doesn't show. Let's put the 
field glasses on him. Do you see him? Yeah, he's talking to a girl just inside the door. That cinches it. That's the girl he's supposed to sell to. Five five to unit nine. Uh, we have the suspect under observation. He's inside talking to the girl, our number two suspect. Stand by. They're both going off to the car now. Get through with these. Have the field glasses on both suspects. A girl dressed in Levi's. Both uh, five, getting five into the unit car. Nine. Suspect pick up the girl. They're pulling out on Santa Monica Boulevard, heading west. Let's take them. Unit nine, Roger. We see him. Okay, you take the front. We'll take the rear. Five five, Roger. <laughs> Suspect driving. The girl on the passenger side. He's behind now. When we move up alongside, we'll have to watch. See that they don't throw any evidence out of the car. Almost up alongside now. Oh, you want to know? He's okay, I got it. Police officers, pull that car over. Pull that car over the curb. Police officers. Second undercover car is getting in behind. Two officers and a policewoman on. Come on, fellas. Get out of the car. Keep your hand out of your pocket. What's this thing? Keep your hand out of your pocket. Watching carefully. See that they don't throw any evidence away. Stand right where you are. Whose purse is this? It's mine. Searching girl's purse. How's that getting in? Marijuana. What do you mean you don't know? Found it. Where'd you find it? In the street. My whereabouts in the street? I just found it up there. How old are you? 17. All right. One racer. Where'd you get it? I found it. How many more do you have? I just have any. Police woman searching female suspect. We found that one right there. Take her down and search her down in the station. Policewoman taking girl into custody. Let's move over to the male suspect. The pusher, as we say in the trade. You're under arrest. What's this? These are handcuffs. You know what that means, don't you? Plain, simply, you're under arrest. Putting the suspect in the back of the car. We'll ride up front. Well, they get a year. Roll out. You got a kid out. Well, I got in. You get nothing at your ass at all, huh? No. <clears throat> well, what's wrong? I mean, I don't know what's wrong. You have the slightest idea, huh? No. No idea at all. Yeah, get plenty of time to think about it. Relax. Yeah. Here you go. Uh, fire, fire to control one. Uh, will you radio unit nine? Request they shake the male suspect's house. We'll meet him at the station. Control one to five, five, ten, four. Control one to unit nine. Unit five, five, request you shake down the house of the male suspect. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of a detective unit on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real, and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. And now we switch you to police headquarters where a narcotics investigation is underway, and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. Isolation section of the jail. Male suspect booked on narcotic charge. We're going into the cell to see if he has anything to say. Sergeant Perkins will handle. Jimmy, you want to open up eight for me? Right. <clears throat> What'd 
you do today? Where'd you go? Tell me all about it. I'm going to look for a job. Tell me about the narcotics. Tell me all about it. Tell me where you get it, where you got some right now. I'm not well, going to around. Why don't you think I get those people narcotics? So it makes me think so. What do you think we've been following you around for? I don't get paid to follow some good, clean, honest citizen around. I get paid for following guys like you around and putting guys like you in jail and keeping you in jail. And every time you get out, you make a mistake, you go back to jail. Well, how can you never arrest me before? Yeah, we figured we got you dead bang this time. Yeah, we figured you're peddling to minors. You know how old she is? Um, She's only 16 years old, going on 17. I'm going to be busted on furnishing narcotics to juveniles. Did you know that? Uh, if I tell you people that are using dope, dope, I'll walk out of here, huh? Nope. You and I, I guess, are not going to deal. I can see that. Listen to what you call uh, the juvenile section and have the matron bring the girl down to book on narcotics. Squirming. Go see what the girl has to say. Okay. Young girl. Suspect sitting in a chair. Matron standing by. Girl working over a wad of gum. A long time since I've seen you. Hey, my husband. Where did you get the uh, marijuana cigarette? guy gave it to me to hold for him. He said he didn't tell me what it was or nothing. He just gave it to me to hold for him. You never were much of a liar. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't care. Where's the rest of it? I don't know. He's trying to What'd yeah. you do with him? I never did have any except that. I didn't know what that was one that Dad gave me. You didn't you never show him that one cigarette before? Well, I've seen him, yeah, but... And you didn't know what this one was? Well, it was so small. You remember the time that he ran away... We had a long talk, and you told me an awful lot about marijuana. Oh, You're running with all these different guys that smoked it and pushed it. Remember that talk we had? Yeah, I remember. Now, so don't tell me now a year later, a year and a half later, that you didn't know what you had. And don't try to tell me that you don't know where the rest of them are. I don't have any. Well... What happens if I bring this guy in and he says that you did have? Well, he could be lying, said, too, you know. He's not lying. You're stuck anyway because you, you had marijuana on you. I don't know. Now we're going to go for something heavier and bigger. Well, I'm going up this time anyway. Sure, you're going up this time. We start pushing a pushing rap against you instead of a possession. How can you do that? Don't worry about it. We will. Yeah. I don't make promises that I can't carry out. You got anything to say? No, I never had any anything like that. Any what? Anything like that. What did you start to say? I started to say anything about what I was going to say. You started to say joints, didn't no, you? No, I didn't. That's the word mean. <laughs> Ten years I've been sitting behind a desk talking to people right like you. Right, right across the desk from me. For ten years I've been analyzing people. Yeah. Talk to hundreds and hundreds of people. Every one of them sit back there and they try to lie their way out of it. And once in a great while they succeed. Once in a great while. 
this isn't one of the times. You're lying. You're lying right down the line. You think it's going to save you. You think it's going to help you. It's not going to help you. It's not going to save you. Nothing's going to help me. Because I'm going to go up anyway. So if you don't want to answer our questions, then you can stand up now and walk outside. Young girl taking a large wad of gum out of her mouth. Dropped it on the desk. Matron shaking her head. Perkins. Yeah, Johnny. No, she's just leaving. Come on in. Did you find anything at his house? Good. Good. Yeah, bring him in. Okay. What's up? Well, Johnny shook this guy's house. Mm-hmm. Came up with a stash of marijuana behind his dresser. Boys talked to him and he's willing to talk now. Good deal. Keep the, uh, Narcotic officer is coming in. Johnson. Atkinson. Is this what you found in his dresser, John? Yeah, this was in his, behind his dresser up there in the room. Hmm. How many sticks is it? Three. Six. Nine, ten, twelve, fourteen. About twenty. Twenty sticks. Uh-huh. Have you opened any of it to see how good a grade of marijuana it is? No, I'll open one up now. He says it's real good. He, uh, what he's done, he buys it and then he uh, takes the best out of it. Mm-hmm. He buys it for $15 a 10, then he takes the best stuff out of it and then sells the coal for $15. So he's, what he's doing, actually, he's supplying himself free. George, you want to bring him in? Yeah, I'm pushing the miners. Darn good case. One way for you to look at it is somebody didn't worry about you. They know you should worry about the other guy. Yeah. I was thinking about that too. Alright. How much how much weed did you have? How many joints? About thirty. About thirty. And how much raw stuff? About half a can. About half a can. You got uh, fifteen dollars for these thirty joints and a half can. Mm-hmm. How much? How much do you pay for this stuff when you get it? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. And how much do you make? How much profit do you make on it? I get about twenty-five joints out of it. In other words, you make fifteen. Uh, you pay fifteen dollars for a can, for a full mm-hmm. can. And you sell. Uh, how about you sell your joints for? Uh, four bits of peas. Four bits of peas. Yeah. Where do you get your stuff? A different guy. How about this Johnny? Yeah, you push it. Did you ever get any off of him? Yeah. How do you how do you make contact with him? Can anybody make contact with him or is he just known to certain ones? Just the ones he knows. Just the ones he knows. Does he sell to you for resale? Mm-hmm. I mean it's uh somebody gotta introduce you to him or scroll for you or something. What if I went down and asked for <clears throat> Johnny wasn't there and asked some guys if Johnny was around? Do you think I could get from somebody else? Mm-mm. Didn't have a chance. Not you. This stuff that you had was sure lousy. Just the looks of it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that wasn't the that wasn't the best. How much do you blast? Not much. Joined today, I guess. What's it do for you? So I go to sleep. That's about it. About it. I want to tell you something just between you and me. The guy that pushes narcotics to juveniles is a... I'm going to take him back and put him in his cell, George. you have just heard 
is real. This narcotic investigation was recorded as it actually occurred. And now, back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's investigation is the beginning of a crackdown on a large narcotic ring. Incidentally, the male suspect pleaded guilty as charged and is now confined in the county jail. The second suspect, the 17-year-old girl, admitted she had purchased marijuana cigarettes and later resold them to high school girls. She, too, was found guilty as charged. A feeling of resentment from the arresting officers leaked through in tonight's narcotic investigation. This is an honest human reaction as two of the officers have teenage children. Another has a sister in her teens. They know and have seen what the use of marijuana can lead to. Stealing to obtain money to purchase the narcotics. The gradual swing to the hard stuff. The use of heroin injected into the arm. The personal degradation that follows. It's not a pretty picture and it's not meant to be. But it's a real problem, and one that we, the law enforcement agency, and the citizen must fight together. If tonight we have brought this picture into the open and reached just a few, then we have a meaning for Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the -the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hadlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by the official police recorder, Don Reed.